So how does this play into things that we can measure, like momentum? Well, we remember what momentum was, according to Newton's model, which we can call classical. P is just m times v. Okay, if you double v, you double the amount of momentum. But you can't just keep doubling v forever and ever because there's this universal speed limit to the world that we live in, which is c. Right? You can't take v up above c. Something bad happens when you do that. And so we need the relativistic version of momentum which looks almost the same, except we're going to stick a gamma right in front of it. Okay. And again, gamma is equal to 1 over the square root, 1 minus v squared over c squared. Okay. It's a number bigger than 1. So relativistic momentum has more momentum in it than classical momentum. All right, so let's think about this now in terms of one of your homework problems. And this is, let me see if I can figure out what number it is. Okay, this is one that we looked at uh, earlier in office hours. Um, it is 26.18, and it says the following. Let particle of mass m move at some v, we'll call it v1, of 0 0.37 c. How fast does V2 have to be to have twice the momentum? Okay, so particle moving at V1, it's got some momentum. We want to go faster to V2 and we want to hit twice the momentum. So. If you were in the classical world, obviously you would just double it, right? Double V, it doubles the momentum. But now in this relativistic world, we have this factor gamma, which has V in it, all right? So we have two relationships. We have P1 is equal to gamma 1 M V1. And then we have P2, which is equal to gamma 2 m v2 and we know that that is going to be twice the initial momentum p1. All right, so now we have this relationship here and we need to solve for uh, v2. All right, so let's see if we can do that. All right, so let's write it over here. We've got 2 times P1 is equal to gamma 2 mv2. And we know what P1 is. It's gamma 1 mv1. All right, right off the bat, we can get rid of m. Okay, m is the rest mass. They were calling it m naught. It's the same thing. m is the rest mass. Those, cancels out. Those cancel out. And now let's do a little trick. Let's divide by gamma 2 and let's divide by gamma 1 on the right side. Okay, so I took gamma 1 and put it under there. I took gamma 2 and put it under there. And now let's square both sides. So if I square this, 
and I square this, what do we get? We get 4 v1 squared over gamma 2 squared equals v2 squared over gamma 1 squared. Okay, but we know that gamma 2 squared is 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So 1 over gamma 2 squared has to be 1 minus v2 squared over c squared. 1 over gamma 1 squared is going to be 1 minus v1 squared over c squared. And so now this whole thing here becomes the following. We get 4 v1 squared times 1 over gamma 2 squared, which is 1 minus v2 squared over c squared. And on the right side, we have v2 squared times 1 over gamma 1 squared, which is 1 minus v1 squared over c squared. And now we can just simplify this and solve for v2. All right, let's just do it real quick. Multiply everything by c squared. We get 4 v1 squared times c squared minus 4 v1 squared v2 squared equals v2 squared c squared minus v2 squared v1 squared. And now I have a v1 squared, a v2 squared, I have a v1 squared, a v2 squared, and so I can put those together. And then I have 4v1 squared c squared that's left. When I add 4 to that negative 1, I get 3v1 squared v2 squared. And now we can put the v2s together. v2 squared times c squared plus 3v1 squared. And then finally we can divide by that quantity and you end up with the following. V2 is equal to, and I'm going to have to take the square root, so I can do that right now, 2V1C all over the square root of C squared plus 3V1 squared. Okay, I went through that slightly quickly, but you can replay the video later on and double check your algebra and make sure you get the same thing. And now you have all these numbers, right? We have V1, we have C, obviously. And if you plug in all those numbers, you can double check with mine, you should get 0 0.62, and it wants it in the units of speed of light, and so you write 0 0.62, and then the units are C. Okay, so those were for my numbers. You, of course, will have different numbers for your V1. That one looked familiar, Jessica? Yeah. That's the one we went over earlier in office hours. Painfully, I might add. All right, questions about this one before, uh, before we move on?